the James Webb Telescope has identified six galaxies that exist half a billion years after the Big Bang. There are a few things that science has always been confident about. The creation and expansion of the universe is one of those things. But the James Webb Telescope has turned the whole thing upside down. Michio Kaku has just confirmed that a groundbreaking James Webb Space Telescope discovery has finally set the record straight on something unbelievable. Join us as we bring you the real truth that was just brought to light and how this one discovery might just be the key to changing everything. And it's all about the Hubble tension. This is a cosmic mystery that revolves around the discrepancy in the measured rate of the universe's expansion. This discrepancy emerged as astronomers tried to precisely determine the rate at which the universe is expanding, known as the Hubble constant. The universe's expansion rate is typically measured through two primary methods. One relies on observations of the cosmic microwave, which is the afterglow of the Big Bang, while the other uses measurements of the distances to distant galaxies and their recession velocities. The issue arises because these two methods will get slightly different results. Measurements derived from the CMB using data from the Planck satellite suggest a slower expansion rate compared to measurements using observations of distant galaxies made by telescopes like the Hubble Space Telescope. Scientists hoped that the James Webb Space Telescope, with its improved capabilities and instruments, might help resolve this discrepancy. But things didn't really go that way. The recent announcement revealed that the JWST's initial observations did not offer a definitive answer. Instead, they added more confusion to the overall situation. The thing is, the Hubble constant is fundamental in understanding the rate of expansion of the universe. The value of this constant helps determine the distance between galaxies and the speed at which they are moving away from us. The discrepancy lies in the different measurements that are obtained through various methods. The predicted value from models, around 68 kilometers per second per megaparsec, is at odds with actual measurements derived from observations of stars and galaxies. Different methods used to measure the Hubble constant result in varying values. Some measurements point to approximately 69.8 kilometers per second per megaparsec, while others yield even higher values, around 74 kilometers per second per megaparsec. These discrepancies might seem minor, but when dealing with the vast distances in the universe, even small deviations can significantly impact our understanding of cosmic evolution and the age of the universe. They really do change everything. Resolving this discrepancy is crucial for cosmology, as it might suggest the need for new physics or hidden components within the universe that aren't accounted for in current models. So, bridging this gap is extremely important to gain a comprehensive understanding of the universe's structure, evolution, and fundamental properties. That's where the problem today comes in. The recent observations by the James Webb Space Telescope suggest that the discrepancies in the Hubble constant are not likely due to instrumental errors or technical issues in measurements made by its predecessor, the Hubble Space Telescope. Edwin Hubble's groundbreaking work in the 1920s established the concept of the universe's expansion, which is why the Hubble Space Telescope is named after him. The HST has been a crucial tool in measuring the universe's expansion rate and providing invaluable insights into cosmic evolution. The JWST's findings imply that the discrepancies observed in the Hubble constant measurements might not stem from inherent errors or limitations in the data collected by the Hubble Space Telescope. Instead, it suggests that the issue might be more complex, perhaps lying in the fundamental nature of the universe itself or within the physics governing its expansion. Why is this a problem? Well, Hubble observations, particularly those involving Cepheid stars, have been pivotal in determining the Hubble constant. Cepheid variable stars are used as cosmic distance markers because of their predictable brightness fluctuations, allowing astronomers to estimate distances across vast cosmic scales. The recent insights from the Webb Telescope just confirmed that potential systematic errors in the Hubble Space Telescope's measurements of Cepheid stars likely don't really have a substantial influence on the existing discrepancy in the Hubble constant. This conclusion indicates that the tension in the Hubble constant isn't solely attributed to inaccuracies in the measurements of Cepheid variable stars by the Hubble Space Telescope. The Hubble Space Telescope is crucial in resolving the Hubble tension due to its ability to observe stellar brightness with extraordinary precision. Operating beyond Earth's atmosphere, 
which can distort observations, Hubble captures accurate measurements, especially of stars. As scientists study these brightness levels, the scientists can gauge the distance of these stars. With the known constant speed of light, they can determine how long that light has traveled to reach us. This data, when collected from numerous stars and processed through calculations, is extremely important in deciphering the Hubble constant. Before the Hubble Space Telescope's launch in 1990, the uncertainty surrounding the expansion rate of the universe was unimaginable. Astronomers were unsure whether the universe had been expanding for 10 billion or 20 billion years. So there was a massive gap in the information here, and we had to find out more about the universe that we live in. The Hubble Telescope's observations and subsequent calculations revolutionized our understanding of cosmic expansion and deepened our insights into the age and dynamics of the universe. If we're getting super specific here, there is one star in particular that scientists like to focus on, Cepheid stars. These hold a pivotal role in the quest to decipher the universe's expansion rate. These colossal supergiant stars outshine our sun by an astonishing 100,000 times. Scientists prize sea feeds as the premier tool for measuring the distances of galaxies situated hundreds of millions of light years away. According to Adam Rees, these measurements are extremely important in determining the Hubble constant, marking a critical step toward unraveling the mysteries of cosmic expansion. Adam Rees from the Johns Hopkins University and the Space Telescope Science Institute highlighted a key attribute of CFIDs, their pulsating nature, where they rhythmically expand and contract. This pulsation directly relates to their intrinsic luminosities. Longer pulsation periods signify a brighter intrinsic luminosity, providing a crucial baseline for accurate measurements. Hubble's advantage lies in its vantage point beyond Earth's atmosphere enabling it to discern individual cephides within galaxies situated over a hundred million light years away. By observing these stars fluctuating brightness over time, astronomers can calculate their distances. The Hubble telescope particularly faces limitations with infrared light detection due to its relatively less sensitive red light vision compared to its sharpness in the blue light spectrum. This shortfall causes challenges when observing cephide stars as their light, especially in the red wavelengths blends with neighboring stars in the telescope's field of view. Infrared observation holds immense significance for studying celestial objects. As light travels vast distances through space, its wavelengths stretch out, shifting towards the red end of the electromagnetic spectrum due to cosmic expansion. This phenomenon, known as redshift, causes distant galaxies and objects to appear redder when observed from Earth. But with infrared, you can see the truth behind the light. Infrared light also possesses a unique capability to penetrate through cosmic dust without being significantly scattered or absorbed. This feature allows astronomers to observe celestial objects that might be obscured by interstellar material in other light wavelengths. But the challenge comes up when trying to measure the true brightness of a Cepheid star that's potentially hidden behind interstellar dust. Such obstruction could cause the star to appear fainter or blend its light with neighboring stars leading to ambiguity in its observed properties. To get around this issue, astronomers apply statistical methods to estimate the average impact of this blending effect on measurements. Although, this introduces a level of uncertainty, because you can't exactly get it right this way, the James Webb Space Telescope plays a really important role here. Unlike the Hubble, the JWST is specifically designed to excel in the infrared spectrum. With its enhanced capabilities in observing infrared light, the JWST can look through cosmic dust and get clearer, more precise observations of celestial objects. By utilizing the JWST's advanced infrared vision, astronomers hope to observe distant stars like Cepheids more clearly. This telescope's improved sensitivity and resolution in the infrared wavelengths allow for a deeper understanding of these stars' true luminosity and distance providing more accurate measurements to refine our understanding of the universe's expansion rate and resolve the Hubble tension. The researchers' approach involves specific steps aimed at refining the accuracy of measurements derived from Cepheid stars, which are pivotal in determining cosmic distances. The first step involves observing Cepheids in NGC 4258, a galaxy with a known and reliable geometric distance. By studying Cepheids in this galaxy and comparing their observed luminosities to their known distances, astronomers can calibrate their measurement methods. This step establishes a pretty good reference point for accurate distance estimation. The second step focuses on studying Cepheids within galaxies that have recently hosted type IEA supernovas. 
These supernovas are bright stellar explosions used as cosmic markers. By observing Cepheids in these host galaxies and cross-verifying the data against Hubble's observations, astronomers can validate the accuracy of their measurements. Any discrepancies or variations in the data might provide crucial insights into the underlying factors contributing to the Hubble tension. About all of this, Reese said, JWST, I think, has really kind of put a nail in the coffin of, was there a problem with Hubble's Cepheid measurements? He's honing in on the sheer impact of the James Webb Space Telescope on addressing uncertainties in Hubble's Cepheid measurements. According to Reese, the JWST's observations provide substantial evidence supporting the accuracy of Hubble's measurements of Cephasid stars. At the same time, though, Reese emphasizes a critical point. The discrepancies in the Hubble constant measurements aren't necessarily a crisis, but more of a scientific question. Despite the need to pinpoint the exact value of the Hubble constant, Reese emphasizes the greater importance of understanding the underlying reasons for discrepancies between various measurement tools, particularly those considered as the gold standard, such as the Cepheid stars. For him and the scientific community, the main goal lies in figuring out why these top-tier tools yield differing results instead of solely fixating on obtaining a specific numerical value for the Hubble constant. This isn't just a problem that can be solved so easily, though. It runs deep. For decades, the standard model has been the one we all went off of. It's the only explanation we've ever actually needed. The standard model in physics refers to a comprehensive framework that describes the fundamental particles and forces that make up the universe. It's a culmination of various theories and principles aimed at understanding the behavior of matter and its interactions. To get to the bottom of it all, you have to look at particles, specifically fermions. Fermions are a class of particles that constitute the building blocks of matter. They are divided into two primary categories, quarks and leptons. Quarks are considered fundamental particles that combine in various ways to form composite particles known as hadrons. Protons and neutrons, which make up the atomic nucleus, are examples of hadrons. Quarks come in different types, up, down, charm, strange top and bottom, and they have fractional electric charges. They're bound together by the strong nuclear force mediated by particles called gluons. Leptons, on the other hand, are a different set of fermions. They do not engage in the strong nuclear force, unlike quarks. Leptons include familiar particles like electrons that are found in atoms, muons, the heavier cousins of electrons, and neutrinos, the neutral, nearly massless particles that barely interact with matter. Leptons are fundamental and indivisible, not made up of smaller particles. Both quarks and leptons are governed by the rules of quantum mechanics and are part of the standard model of particle physics, which describes the fundamental particles and their interactions in the universe. But there are also bosons. Bosons are a type of particle that mediates the fundamental forces between other particles in the universe. Not all of these are the same either. First you have photons, which mediate the electromagnetic force, allowing charged particles to interact electromagnetically. Then there are W and Z bosons, which facilitate the weak nuclear force responsible for processes like beta decay in atomic nuclei. And finally, there's the gluons, which mediate the strong nuclear force, binding quarks together within protons, neutrons, and other hadrons. W bosons are involved in the process of beta decay by mediating the conversion of a neutron into a proton, electron, and antineutrino, while Z bosons mediate interactions involving neutrinos, a type of weakly interacting particle. The discovery of W and Z bosons at CERN's Large Electron-Positron Collider in 1983 confirmed the existence of these particles, providing experimental evidence for the weak nuclear force and supporting the electroweak theory. Understanding the weak nuclear force and its carriers, the W and Z bosons, is crucial for explaining certain fundamental processes in particle physics and sheds light on the behavior of matter at the smallest scales. Quantum field theory also has its own applications in the standard model. It treats particles as excitations or disturbances in underlying fields that extend throughout space. Each particle type corresponds to a specific quantum field. Particles are viewed as quanta of their respective fields, and interactions occur through exchanges of these field quanta. Symmetry breaking within the electroweak theory is attributed to the Higgs field. This field interacts with other particles, giving rise to the masses of certain particles like the W and Z bosons and fermions. Quantum chromodynamics, 
which are within the whole concept too. It constitutes the framework that describes the strong nuclear force governing interactions between quarks, the fundamental constituents of particles like protons and neutrons. This force is carried by particles called gluons. Quarks possess a property known as color charge, an abstract concept unrelated to visual colors. Gluons, as we've touched on earlier on in this video, themselves carry color charge, contributing to the strong interaction. Due to the nature of the strong force described by QCD, quarks can't exist in isolation but are confined within composite particles, known as hadrons. On the opposite end of the spectrum are electroweak unification. This, a significant aspect within the standard model, depicts the unification of the electromagnetic and weak nuclear forces at extremely high energies, a state prevalent in the early universe shortly after the Big Bang. During this phase, these forces were unified into a single, combined force. But as the universe cooled and underwent symmetry-breaking processes, the electroweak force separated into distinct electromagnetic and weak forces. This separation into distinct forces marked a crucial transformation as the universe evolved, leading to the forces we observe today. The implications of these concepts within quantum field theory and the standard model are massive. QFT serves as a comprehensive framework to comprehend the intricate behavior of particles and forces at the quantum level. The reason why it's so important to learn about the standard model is that it provides a framework for predicting various cosmic features, including gravitational lensing and the properties of distant galaxies. It offers insights into the universe's behavior, explaining phenomena such as the bending of light around massive objects and the structural characteristics of galaxies across vast distances. The discrepancies in measurements have challenged the accuracy and completeness of these predictions. In determining the universe's age, scientists use several methods. One approach involves studying cosmic background radiation, a remnant from the early universe. Analyzing this radiation, helps unravel the history of the universe's expansion, utilizing mathematical models based on Einstein's general theory of relativity. But that's just the thing. Measurements using cosmic microwave background face limitations, particularly in accounting for dark energy's effects, necessitating manual incorporation of its influences based on other observations. Plus, another method involves studying exploding stars, specifically type Y supernovae to gauge the universe's expansion rate. Despite their significance, limitations in observing distant supernovae hinder precise measurements, contributing to discrepancies in age estimation. But why is all of this such a big deal? Well, the age of the universe, determined by the Hubble constant and other cosmological parameters, is fundamental to our understanding of the cosmos and its evolution. It's something we need to know. Knowing the age of the universe helps us trace its history. It enables scientists to understand when significant events, like the formation of the first stars or galaxies, occurred. The age of the universe is a critical component in cosmological models. The Lambda Cold Dark Matter model, for instance, relies on accurate estimates of the universe's age to explain its evolution and structure. The age of the universe is interconnected with other fundamental constants and parameters providing insights into the nature of dark energy, dark matter, and the expansion rate. Accurate determination of the universe's age helps validate and refine our cosmological models. If there's a discrepancy between different methods used to estimate the age, it indicates a potential gap in our understanding of the universe's behavior. Now that the James Webb Telescope has shown that even the oldest standing models can be refuted, what does that mean for the rest of the theories and models we've always believed in? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you in the next one.